year 11, you did a lot of acid base um, and you did a little bit of redox and redox is redox. It's, it's just difficult um, and it doesn't get any easier, but it's something you just got to push your way through. Redox in an exam is always quite tough, but it's, it's always reasonable. It's tough, but it's reasonable. The marks are there. If you sit down with it long enough, you can figure it out. Um, and so that's the really important thing with Redox is that as we go through all our Redox content, it's going to be hard. But my biggest tip to all of you is to sort of keep pushing, to keep pushing, keep thinking like I can get the answer to this because you can. Everyone can get the answer to the Redox questions. They are difficult, but the answers are there and you will get them. You've just got to keep pushing your way through so Redox Basics, as we said before, um, it's acid base. It's a transfer of electrons. I'm sure you've heard of this before, oil rig. Oil refers to oxidation involves loss and rig refers to reduction involves gain. Um, and essentially these are the two sort of basic half equations that you get from them. Um, so Redox Basics, in a redox reaction, one species is the oxidant and the other is the reductant. So terminology matters. So oxidant causes oxidation of the other species, but is it self-reduced? So this can be really confusing. So if I'm the oxidant, I am causing you to be oxidized, but you are all causing me to be reduced. So it's like a teacher. A teacher teaches you. The teacher itself doesn't get taught, but you get taught because the teacher is doing the teaching and you are being taught. So you are being oxidized by the oxidant. Um, and then the other way around, the reductant causes reduction and is itself oxidized. So that can be really confusing, um, but I think the best way to go about this is to just write it down and then don't think about it too much. The more you think about it, the more you get confused. This is one of those things, it's like the opposite, look at it once or twice and that's it. The more you look at it, the more you will get confused. Um, so redox basics. Essentially what happens is you have an electron, the electron moves and then you get some changes. So the electron was lost from here. So A underwent oxidation, the electron was gained here. So B underwent reduction. A sent an electron to B, therefore it is um, called the reductant, whereas B pulled the electron from A and therefore it is called oxidation. So what's really important is they occur together we can't have one without the other. Yes, we look at things in terms of half equations and in terms of what is happening in half the reaction. Yes, that happens, but we don't think of it in terms of, um, we don't think of it in terms of, oh yeah, this is happening separately. They all happen together. We just look at it in separate manners because it allows us to unpack what's going on better. Um, the electrons lost by one species, they have to be gained by another. Um, it's like the energy it's like the energy conservation sort of reference. Electrons have to be conserved. So oxidation states. This is how we know if we're going through reduction. So unlike the diagram we saw before, we don't explicitly show the movement of electrons in the chemical equation. How do we determine if it's oxidation? So we look at oxidation states. Um, and they're simply a tool to keep track of how electrons are moving. So let's have a look at this. So few simple rules. I'm sure you went through these last year, so these are probably revision, but oxidation states of free electrons are zero. So chlorine gas, helium gas, uh, near, uh, sodium, solid sodium, or solid iron. You've then got um, the ion versions of these. So you've got chlorine ions or chloride ions. You've got sodium ions. You've got magnesium ions, um, nitrous ions. And then in compounds, there's a few separate rules. So the main group metals have the oxidation states equal to the charge of their iron. So sodium stays plus one, magnesium stays plus two. Hydrogen is almost always plus one and oxygen is almost always negative two. There are two, there are two examples I want you to know. I always forget the hydrogen example, so I'm going to forget that one, but I always remember the oxygen example. So the only, the only occurrence where oxygen is not negative two is H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide. Now hydrogen peroxide, you've probably heard of it before. It is a poison. It was used during World War II a lot um, and is quite dangerous. And that's why it doesn't really exist in this state unless it's forced to by chemists. Um, and that's why it's a poison. So essentially, 
H2O2 plus 1, which makes this plus 2 overall, and negative 1. So negative 2 overall, but the individual atoms are plus 1 and negative 1. So in this case here, it's negative 1 instead of negative 2. That's the only time that it is that way. Now, that the hydrogen one is like, it's like HF or something. No, it's not HF, it's something. I forgot off the top of my head. Um, the hydrogen one has never come up in a VCAR exam. Hydrogen peroxide, the oxygen one, has come up before. So the only examples you need to know. Um, the sum of all oxidation states must also equal the charge in the species. So CO2, what's the charge of the species? It's zero, it's neutral. So if we have negative two, so we've got overall negative four, therefore the other one needs to be plus four because plus four plus negative four, which is what it would be overall, equals zero. Over here, we've got a negative three. So overall, we need to equal negative three. So we have negative two, four times that is negative eight. So we need to finish at negative three. We're gonna have positive five as our phosphate. Same thing here, look at it like that. So there's some really good examples. So which of these is redox? Well, plus two, negative one, plus two, negative one. That's not redox, there's no change of electrons. We've got some more here. Do we have a change? It doesn't look like we have a change, not redox. All right, we've got zero, we've got zero. We've got plus three, we've got negative one. Have we got a change? We do, we have a movement of electrons. Therefore, not redox, not redox, redox. So our last equation here is redox. Those first two are not redox. Um, so, if oxidation state reduces and the species are reduced, if the oxidation state increases, it's been oxidized. So that's another way of thinking about it as well. So, determine whether or not the following reaction is redox. If it is, identify the reductant and the oxidant. I want everyone to take one minute to have a go at this one. Take a minute, have a look through, and write down what you think. All right, hope they've given you enough time. So, is this redox? Well, I think I think it is because I'm asking for the reductant and the oxidant. So, zero, well, this is gonna be negative two, um, and then this is gonna be plus four. This one here is gonna be plus six, so therefore this is gonna be negative three. Here we got plus one, we got negative two. So, we've definitely gone through um, redox, and then if we look at it here, Oh yeah, I put down the full values, apologies. I should have put down the half values. Uh, the individual atom value, sorry. Um, so for things before, it's combustion reaction. Um, oxidation states change, so the oxidant is the O2 and the reductant is the C2H6. Now, you might say to me, why is the reductant the whole molecule, despite the fact the carbon is the only thing that is oxidized? Um, that's because we think of it as the whole species. You can't really just have the carbon there by itself. You need to have it there as a whole compound. So having the whole compound there acts as the reductant, even though it's specifically the carbon doing um, the reducing um, and itself is oxidized. It's the whole species, if you think about it. The whole compound has to be there. Hopefully that sort of makes sense. Um, so balancing half equations. This is another thing that's really important. Um, you'll be asked to write out half equations all the time. You'll be say, you'll be told this becomes this, Give me the half equation. Um, so as you can see here, this is an example of sort of the two half equations within one. So we've got a combustion reaction just from before. This is ethane. And so as you can see here, we said that ethane was it being oxidized and our oxygen was being reduced. So as you can see here, oxygen goes to water ethane goes to the CO2 and then you just added in hydrogens, electrons, hydrogen, electrons, and you had your water there. Um, 
ended up with a full equation. Now, what's really important is how did we get those half equations? We use this thing called the Coase method. So the Coase method. The Coase method stands for <clears throat> key atoms balance the oxygen atoms. So balance the key atoms. So all atoms except for H and O's. Balance the oxygen atoms by adding H2O to the opposite side. So if you've got oxygen, you've got too many oxygen atoms on the right, you're going to add some H2O's to the left to equal out the oxygens. Don't worry about the hydrogens at this point, you're just going to equal out the oxygens. Um, balance the hydrogen atoms by adding H plus ions and then balance the charge by adding electrons. So you're going to add H plus ions and then that's going to balance out the hydrogens and then you're going to balance out the charge because when you add these in, they're going to increase the charge on one side and then you're going to add electrons to balance the charge and then you're going to add the states. So that's the Coase method. So we have an example here. We start off with these two molecules here. So we've got dichromate and we've got chromium ions. So dichromate to chromium ions, what are we going to do first? K, key atoms. We've got two here, we're going to need two here. Then we go O, we've got seven here, we're going to need seven H2Os over here. We then say, all right, hydrogens. I have, I have 14 here, I've got none here, so I'm going to need 14 on the left side. Then we look at charge. I have a charge of 14, 12, and I have a charge of six. So 12 or six, I'm going to need six electrons on my left side. So I need six electrons on my left side. Um, and then states, you just add all your states in. Electrons don't have states, by the way, so never add states onto an electron. Now, this question here was a VCAR question. VCAR 2016, two marks to go through this method here. Um, and this was the answer they wanted, and this is how they wanted you to go about it. You don't need to show the steps. You don't need to show, oh, I did K, and I did O, and I need H. This full answer will get you two marks, just writing this down, because they know that you had to go through a method to get there. You can't just put this one on there without doing something. So. This is one of those ones where they allow you to just sort of write down the answer. If it's all balanced with the correct states, you're going to get two marks. Um, so that's how you do that. So another practice question. I think it's good. I think we do some practice questions and I think um, get your mind working. So everyone to have a go at this. This is going to be difficult. If you haven't ever done the Coase method before, you'll, you'll find this difficult and that's okay. Um, but have a go at it. Um, so we've got K-O-H-E-S. Have a go at the Coase method um, and have a go at this one here. I'll give everyone a minute and a half. So, what have we got? We've got till uh, 11 44. Let's have a go at this one. All right, that's 11.44 now. So let's go through this one. So first of all, put out your key ones and balance them. I don't need to balance anything here because if you notice, there's one and one. So we skip the K step, there's no, there's no need for it. O, I have three, I have four. So I'm gonna need to add one to my left side, out of one. Hydrogens, I had two, I have none. 
So therefore, I'm going to add 2 to the right side. My charge, I have a charge of 0, I have a charge of negative 2. So negative 2 on the left, 0 on the right, I'm going to add 2 electrons to the right. States, aqueous, liquid, aqueous, aqueous. Done. So you might ask me, states, how do you go about the states? If in doubt, it's aqueous. Water, always liquid unless they tell you it's a gas. That's about it. The only time you really need to go digging and have a look around is if you're working with combustion reactions and you got your fuels. Um, look in your data book for it, because as I said, on the data book that it says, it gives you the values and it gives you the state that it's in. Make sure you use the right one. If you don't use the right one, you may not get it. So that's simply how you go about this question. This would be a two mark question. Yes, this one was considerably easier than the last one. This would still be a two mark question. It's a free two marks, that's what it is. Um, because the more you practice this, you're gonna be speedy at this. This is gonna be a sort of question you see in your life. Yes, two free marks and I could do it inside a minute. And you'd pump this question out inside a minute. Two marks, you're, you've saved yourself time and you've got free marks. These are great questions in exams and it's something that I want all of you to be on top.